again, my name is Gabe Zona. This is the 2nd of February 2019. One of my friends sent me a rather interesting little email, and it's about Thomas Jefferson. His portrait is on a $2 bill. This is amazing. There are two parts. Be sure to listen to the second part as well. Thomas Jefferson was a very remarkable man who started learning very early in life and never stopped. At five, he began studying under his cousin's tutor. At nine, studied Latin, Greek, and French. At 14, studied classical literature and additional languages. At 16, entered the College of William and Mary, also could write in Greek with one hand while writing the same in Latin with the other. At 19, started law for five years, starting under George Wythe. At 23, started his own law practice. At 25, was elected to the Virginia House of Burgess. At 31, wrote the widely circulated summary view of the rights of British America and retired from his law practice. At 32, was a delegate to the Second Continental Congress. At 33, wrote the Declaration of Independence. At 33 again, took three years to revise Virginia's legal code and wrote a public education bill and the statute for religious freedom. At 36, was elected the second governor of Virginia, succeeding Patrick Henry. At 40, served in Congress for two years. At 41, was the American minister to France and negotiated commercial treaties with European nations, along with Ben Franklin and John Adams. At 46, served as the first Secretary of State under George Washington. At 53, served as Vice President and was elected President of the American Philanthropical Society. At 55, drafted the Kentucky Resolution and became the active head of the Republican Party. At 57, was elected the third President of the United States. At 60, obtained the Louisiana Purchase, doubling the nation's size. At 61, was elected to a second term as President. At 65, retired to Monticello. At 80, helped President Monroe shape the Monroe Doctrine. At 81, almost single-handedly created the University of Virginia and served as its first president. At 83, died on the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, along with John Adams. Thomas Jefferson knew because he himself studied the previous failed attempts at government. He understood actual history, the nature of God, his laws, and the nature of man. This happens to be way more than what most understand today. Jefferson really knew his stuff, a voice from the past to lead us into the future. John F. Kennedy held a dinner in a White House for a group of the brightest minds in the nation at that time. He made this statement, quote, This is perhaps the assembly of the most intelligent ever to gather at one time in the White House, with the exception of when Thomas Jefferson dined alone. Quote, when you get piled upon one another in large cities, as in Europe, we shall become as corrupt as Europe. Thomas Jefferson. Quote, that democracy will cease to exist when you take away from those who are willing to work and give it to those who would not. Thomas Jefferson. It is incumbent on every generation to pay its own debt as it goes, a principle which, if acted on, would save one half the wars of the world. Thomas Jefferson. I predict future happiness for Americans if they can prevent the government from wasting the labor of the people under the pretense of taking care of them. Thomas Jefferson. My reading of history convinces me that most bad government results from too much government. Thomas Jefferson. No free man shall ever be debarred the use of arms. Thomas Jefferson. The strongest reason for the people to retain the right to keep and bear arms is, as a last resort, to protect themselves against tyranny in government. Thomas Jefferson. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time 
with the blood of patriots and tyrants, Thomas Jefferson. To compel a man to subsidize with his taxes the propagation of ideas which he disbelieves and abhors is sinful and tyrannical, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson said in 1802, quote, I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and the corporation that will grow up around the banks will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on a continent their fathers conquered. Hey folks, if you don't repost this and pass this along to every single person that you know, and if you don't ask them to do the same, shame on you. Thanks for listening.